What is happening guys? So today I thought I'd show you how I was able to get my channel, this one that you're watching right now, from zero to 10,000 subscribers in just under two months. Now I might be new to YouTube, but I'm not new to creating content and growing an audience. If you take a look at my Facebook insights, you'll see that between 2019 and 2020, I actually had over 300 million views. And in that time, I gained around 400,000 new followers. It's also worth noting that 100% of this activity was organic. I didn't pay a single penny for any promotion whatsoever. But Facebook and YouTube differ massively, so I had to do a lot of research to find out exactly the best way to approach this. So how was I able to get 10,000 subscribers in less than 60 days? Well, the main thing that helped me is keyword research. Some people start up a channel, they think of a topic which might be really helpful to people, they can even make some great content on this topic, but if you put it out into the YouTube community and there is nobody out there searching for that particular keyword or key phrase, then how do you think they're going to find your video? You need to know exactly what people are searching for word for word. Now, there's two main companies out there that provide a keyword research tool. They're both known as the best on the market, but I'm going to tell you why vidIQ is 100% better than TubeBuddy. Now, TubeBuddy takes their data from Google, and the problem with that is people on Google are searching entirely different things than the people on YouTube. For example, cheap dog treats might be searched a million times a month on Google because people are looking for websites related to that, but on YouTube, the search volume might be only a couple of thousand. However, if you take a different search phrase, for example, how to shave your dog in under 60 seconds, I don't know why you'd search for that, but if you did, then I'm sure that there'll be a lot more people searching for it on YouTube rather than on Google because people are going to want to watch that visually. And vidIQ is the only platform which will give you this accurate YouTube data. So enough talking, let's jump straight onto the computer and I will show you how it all works. Okay, so inside vidIQ you have a dashboard page which is just an overview and then you have tabs to keep track of your competitors and of your subscribers and there's an SEO tab to help with search engine optimization. But the keywords research tool is what we're going to be focusing on. Now, unfortunately, the keywords research tool does not come with the free version of vidIQ, but it does come with the cheapest paid version and that is literally only $7.50 per month. On top of that, there's often different deals or discounts. So again, if you check the link in the description, you can go straight to the cheapest price. So let's say that you've started a channel about mobile phones and you want to know the best topic that you can make a video on. So we'll start by typing in iPhone 12. Now, as you can see down the left, this is the list of different keywords. And then there are three main things to focus on. The search volume is the amount of searches per month on YouTube. And then next to that, you have the competition. So this is how many people are also using those keywords. In other words, the lower the competition, the better. Next to this, we have an overview overall score and this is basically a combination of the two in an easy to read format. So let's take a look at some of these keywords. Now as you can see iPhone 12 as a keyword is actually very popular. It's searched about 3.3 million times per month but because of that the competition is also very high. Now I suggest when you're starting a channel you want to be looking for keywords with a competition rating of either low or very low. So many new channels make the mistake of going for the most popular keywords because in their head, that means that they're going to get searched more, therefore there's more chance of getting views. But this is incorrect. It's better to find a search term which has less views but also has less competition. Because if you can't get your video close to the number one spot in the YouTube search, you are not going to get any views. So from here, what we can do is start to look at individual models of the iPhone. So the iPhone 12 Pro also has a large search volume, but the competition is still high. This also goes for the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but as we come down a bit, we'll find the iPhone 12 mini. Now this is looking a bit better. The search volume is still huge at 2.3 million, but the competition is now just medium. If your channel is already fairly well established, then this is a keyword that could be worth targeting. But for now, we still want to find a keyword with low or very low competition. 
So we know that the iPhone 12 mini is the best model of iPhone to target. So we're going to click on that keyword and now it's going to bring up all the keywords related to the iPhone 12 mini. And straight away, I can see one here which has low competition and a search volume of 66,000 per month. And this is a very good option for a new channel. So this keyword is iPhone 12 mini camera. Now this keyword is actually already good enough to make some content on, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go one step further and click on that keyword to see if we can find anything better. And in this new list, I found the keyword iPhone 12 mini battery test. Now I prefer this because it has a slightly higher search volume of 84,000 per month, plus it has extra words. The more words, the more specific the search and therefore the more targeted your audience is. So now you can go away and make your content on the iPhone 12 mini battery test. And when you come to upload it is when we're going to make use of this keyword. So the first thing you want to do is put the keyword itself in the title. You can then add a line to this to lure people in so for example iPhone 12 mini battery test is it any good now next up you have the description and you want to try and get your keyword into the description about four times without it seeming spammy so for example you could start the description with the title of the video and then you can start a paragraph something like today I thought I'd try an iPhone 12 mini battery test then you can write out a couple of paragraphs about the video before fitting the keyword in again this time I'll say something like, as you can see from the results of this iPhone mini 12 battery test, and then follow this up with the conclusion about the video. And lastly, I'm just going to write, I've run this iPhone 12 battery test so you don't have to, so I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And now you can see that we've managed to fit the keyword into the description four separate times without it seeming spammy. Now next up, we need to add our keyword to the first video tag. And then we want to add some more tags. You're allowed up to 500 characters in the tag section, so we want to take full advantage of this. So when we come back into vidIQ keywords research tool, you can now go ahead and select all these similar keywords. And this time you can be a little bit more lenient with the competition, so you can include the ones that say medium. Now I'm just going to select a few for now to show you how it's done, but you can spend a while making sure that you're covering all angles. Once you've done this, you simply click to copy the tags and then you paste them into YouTube. So there we have it guys, that keyword research technique and vidIQ were the main reasons I was able to get from zero to 10,000 subscribers in less than two months. However, although vidIQ gives you the edge and is an amazing tool to help you get to where you want to be, you have to remember that you cannot solely rely on keyword research. It is definitely one of, if not the main thing that you need to focus on when figuring out which type of video to record, but there's no point in having a video which people can find easily if the content itself is no good because then you're going to get a lot of thumbs down and that in turn will tell the YouTube algorithms that your video is not very popular so you're not going to stay at the top of the search rank for long. So although vidIQ is definitely something that you need in your arsenal, you have to remember to keep the other aspects of your content creation up to scratch as well. Now all of this are things that I'm going to be going over in other videos on my channel. So if you want to learn how to grow your YouTube and keep up with making good content, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you haven't already got vidIQ, I highly recommend that you check out the link in the description because that will take you directly to their website and also make sure that you can take advantage of the best deal that they have on. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a lot of success with your channel. Give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one.